Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the show. I'm your host, Josh Reeves. This is the Monday, February 25th, 2019 edition of the broadcast. Thank you very much for getting into the show and being here with me tonight. I've got quite a few things to give you my take on and discuss with you here on the show, so I'll do my best to get into all that for you. Lots of stuff to give you my take on and my analysis on, so... I'm going to be getting into all that. Thank you very much. Hope you had a nice weekend. Uh, if you don't know about it, a lot of people don't know about it. And it's, uh, there's, it's kind of strange. There's, uh, you know, there's some people out there that got parts one and two of my presentation and didn't get parts three and four. And I'm just sitting there going, man, if you got part one and two and that's all you watched, I feel sorry for you. I really do. Or I really feel genuinely sorry for you. And now part five is out. Uh, there's a lot of people bought parts one, two, three, and four and didn't buy part five. That's fine. Uh, you know, that's your choice. But again, uh, I just don't know why you wouldn't have, if you, if you got that far, I don't know why you wouldn't want the entire picture because we tie up a lot of stuff and answer a lot of questions in part five that uh, in the uh, supplemental data portion that uh, lingered from the first, man, part three and four. I mean, that's, that's where the hammer comes down and those. So I don't, I don't know what about that. I get some people not getting part five. It hasn't been out that long. It's not even been out in a week yet. So, um, some people are behind. So we've got to wait till they get paid, whatever. But, uh, yeah, the other, just, <laughs> if you if you've seen part two, you haven't seen three or four. I, I don't get that. I don't get that at all. You need to get on that. Um, if you haven't seen all part five parts, you haven't seen any of it of my new presentation um, that I've put out parts that kind of gradually come out from January to February now. And uh, yeah, it's some mind blowing stuff in there. It's amongst, I, the, I think the most important stuff I've ever done. And then with uh, spellcasters two and three coming right behind it, that's, you know, that's, it's, it's going to be even better. Um, it's, it's good. It's, it's weird for a wild ride. That's for sure. So yeah, Mystery Hollywood, Cults, Conspiracy, Stargates, and more. Get all five parts now on sale in the download shop. Don't delay. Get yours now. Uh, we also have a deal going on this month for our uh, uh, operating cost fundraiser. If you, everybody who contributes $100 or more will get... Uh, any five downloads from the download shop of your choice. You just, once you contribute, you just have to email me, let me know what downloads you want, and then I'll send you the links. So that's a good way. If you want to make a contribution and you want to get all five parts of the presentation, it's a good way to do that. Uh, that deal runs this week until uh, Friday. So get your contributions in. This is our operating cost fundraiser week. This is the week when we have to raise 100% of our operating cost goal to uh cover all the operating costs we did not reach our weekly goal last week of two hundred dollars that's a new thing i'm starting and we didn't get any contributions in last week at all so um that's like i said that's the new thing i'm going to be doing it's kind of kind of like the patreon style thing um and if we don't get any country if we have a week where we don't get any contributions like we did last week i won't be delivering any, any new shows anymore We'll have a goal to set. Once we meet that set, then I'll deliver more shows. Then it'll reset again. We'll have another goal. That's how it's going to work for now. So if we have a week like last week, you know, uh, last week was kind of the first week we started doing this. So I'm letting it ride, but I'm 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 not going to do this anymore. If we don't get contributions, I'm not going to I'm not going to keep delivering shows and delivering work if we're not going to get contributions for work. I'm just not going to do it. We're going to have those goals set. We don't reach that. I'm not delivering any more shows till we reach the goal. That's the way I'm going to do it from now on. Uh, it's the only way I can do it to stay alive and keep this thing going. And that's the most important thing. That's more important than anything else is keeping the minimum amount we need every month to keep everything on and keep everything going. As I work on these films, again, I'm a one man operation. I you know, even every, just pretty much everybody else you can name that does any kind of a, you know, a podcast or radio show or anything else. They always have somebody, 
you know, a uh, so-called producer or whoever working with them or what I have nobody. I literally don't have one single other person that works with me on this and I handle every aspect of it. And unless you've ever done this, you have no idea what that means and what that entails and how hard that is to be, um, you know, the one person that has to keep the ship afloat all the time. So you have to keep that in mind when you, uh, you know, when you watch my work, when you see what I do here, uh, you got to keep in mind that I'm only one person and I can't give every single person out there individual attention. And that's what every single person wants. And it's fucking annoying shit, man. I can't give every single person out there. I try to do my best when I can, you know, to be cordial and answer emails for people, but I can't respond and be everybody's friend. And I'm not going to meet up with you and hang out. We're not going to be buddies. Get that out of your mind. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go hang, have a beer with you when you come through my town. I'm not going to do it. I don't do it. Uh, I can't, I've never done that. I can't do that. Uh, it's, it's just the way it is. You know, if that makes you butt hurt, I'm sorry, but I got to be honest with you, you know, cause I get that all the time. And people want to, oh, why? why not? Oh, come get it. Not going to do it, man. Just not going to do it. Um, it's, you know, it's like I said, it's one of those things where uh, it's just frustrating, you know, cause I'm, I'm cordial to everybody. I'm nice to everybody. And I, you know, I give people info, people you know, answer, answer questions all the time, you know, respond back personally when people have queries about stuff. And, uh, and, I, and I, again, I don't have a problem with that. I'm, I'm cool with that. I like what, I like if I can be of service to somebody and give them, you know, info and knowledge on their own personal quest for knowledge. That's the whole reason why I do this in the first place. But it's unfair for the people, especially for people, you know, there's, there are some people that, uh, you know, they want my, they, they want to do it all the time. Like, I mean, I get it. You know, you got a question, whatever you're going to email me. You want to find out something, this, you want to comment. Hey, I'm fine with them. Cool. That, but I'm talking about people who do, who wear me out on this, with this stuff, four or five emails a week, every week. And then when it gets to the fundraising week, they disappear. Poof, be gone. And then once they think stuff settled down again, then they come back, still haven't contributed anything. And then they come back and they want to send me emails and ask me questions about shit again. And again, I just can't do it. Um, and negativity and bullshit from people, got no time for that either. If all you got to contribute is negative comments, negative statements, I'm done with you. You're out of the door. I'm not going to respond to you. I'm not going to talk to you. I don't have time for any of that. Listen, I have to deal with enough bullshit every single day and I could very easily mire myself own self down in all that negativity stuff. And I don't let it happen because I'm done with that. I'm done with that shit a long time ago. I mired myself in, in negativity and all that shit for years. I'm not going to do it anymore. And if you try to lay your negative negativity trip on me, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. If you don't have something positive to say or to contribute to my work, I do not want to hear from you anymore. That's just, the, that's a fact. That's, that's the cold, hard facts. Negative comments, negative, I don't have time for it. Because in order for me to be able to do and wear all of these hats that I have to wear to do this from, you know, from the editor to the uh, chief researcher to the voiceover guy, to the graphics guy, to the, you know, videographer, whatever, you know, every customer service, shipping department, mail room, you know, every function, that's me. And the only way that I can continue to do all that is to not let the negative interfere. And there are a lot of y'all out there that are some negative motherfuckers, man. I got to be honest with you. Negative as shit. Negative fucking Nancy's is what y'all are. I don't have time for it. 
you're miserable in your life, whatever else, you know, and you want to fucking take it out on me because you think you know everything, yet you've never done anything like this, what I do in your life, ever. And so you have no experience from it, so you have no place to speak from concerning that and what I do. No time for it. If you're positive, plenty of, there's plenty of positive uh, people out there in our audience, and that's, you know, that, I'd rather stick with that. If you're positive and you've got things you want to contribute that can help what I'm trying to do here, whether that be financially, whether that be uh, from ideas on how to reach more people, whatever it may be, anything you can contribute positive to what I do, bring it. Bring it on. I don't want to hear speculative stuff, and this might worry that might because, listen, I get a lot of advice from people, and, and 99% of it is not good advice, and it's, not, it's just stuff that they think would be a good idea. It's not stuff they've ever tried and tested themselves. Well, you should do this, or you should do that. This person does that. Why don't you do that? You know, and you don't have time to explain to every single person that says this, I've tried that. It doesn't work. I mean, I, I'll never forget, t- t- back almost 10 years ago, 9, 10 years ago, people were on me for years. Oh, get a P.O. box. Get a P.O. box. Oh, you'll be flooded with cash if you get a P.O. box. I've had four different P.O. boxes now, and we uh, yielded about $20 total from those. It, it, it wasn't even worth how much it cost to get the P.O. box and keep it open. The amounts we would get were less than that. So, again, I get all, you know, uh, I get lots of, lots of if this, like I've said this before, this was coming suggestions that were coming from people who had tried and true results with the suggestions that they're giving. If they could show me examples of that, I'd be all about it. But all this stuff is just stuff where people, they don't have any idea what they're talking about. They're just making what they think are good suggestions based on their own perception. And 99% of the time, it's terrible advice that doesn't work. And yet people think it does, but yet they've never done anything themselves to back up that. You know what I mean? I mean, why would I take advice from somebody, from somebody who's never even done what they're suggesting and never seen any any benefit from this listen this bullshit that you have to wade through i mean that's why i was so happy to get away from the the secret right stuff after i did secret right two and did law secrets of ancient america volume one after that i just want so ready because i just you get it i mean it fucking wears on your soul man having to deal and, and and process on a daily basis how much evil and sick, sadistic shit these people are, are doing, it, it tries on you after a while. You want to just get away from it, you know? So all of that stuff and what I have to deal with every month with trying to stay alive, it's a monthly, month-to-month struggle just to keep this thing float, afloat and uh, to keep the lights on and everything keep the studio open long enough for me to get the work done is a constant stress filled struggle that I deal with every single month. Um, and then you want to come in, you know, look, I listen, I don't have people have conversation about info. That's the thing. That's not what it, it's most of the, st- the bullshit that I get from people is not even about the information itself. It's about some, completely i don't know what what the word is unimportant you know thing like uh i'm trying to think of an example off the top of my head it's just anything you can think of that is not even directly related to the research and the and the information you know people focus on that i got no time for any of that anymore i have plenty of negativity and plenty of things i can absorb myself in to be in a negative space if that's where I feel like I need to be, okay? I don't need any more of it. I don't need any more from... So I'm just not going to tolerate it anymore. I mean, if you if you come in and you leave stupid-ass negative comments that have no bearing on the information whatsoever on my YouTube channel, I'm going to delete your comment. I'm going to ban you immediately, period, end of story, because that's my right to do it. Period. If I, I don't, I mean, I, I don't want to hear your negativity. I don't want to hear your horseshit because it, it doesn't relate. I got no, that's the thing. Contribute something positive. And very few people do. I got to be honest. Very few people actually. And another thing I got to address. 
Yeah, I'm jumping on the soapbox early here tonight before we get into the, <laughs> we get into the, into the uh, news stories and stuff. I got plenty for you. Don't worry. But I'm jumping on the soapbox for a minute tonight. You know what I'm saying? Got to do it, man. Got to get, got to vent, got to get some of the shit off my chest. Because when you get it off your chest and you vent, then you can let it go. Then it doesn't, then it has no power over you anymore. Um, <laughs> see now, now I lost my train of thought. Now, now I don't even remember what I was about to go on another rant about. That's, that's good though. That's a good thing. But, uh, no, I, I, I actually do remember what I was going to talk about. Uh, I just thought it was, <laughs> cause I, listen, I'm not being, I'm not in a bad mood and I'm not being negative or anything. I just, I have to address these things sometimes because if you don't, if you know, if you don't address them, then they fester and that's no good for anybody. Um, I gotta be honest with you a lot. There was been, it's crazy. I've never seen this before. I, I anticipated that this was going to start happening because it started to happen a little bit around when I came out with spellcasters one. And I knew with, with what I've put together and what I'm going to be presenting in part two and three of that film series, I was going to start seeing even more of this, but I was shocked because I had not anticipated getting more of this upon the release of my newest five-part presentation, Mystery Hollywood. But I got to tell you, an unexpected thing has occurred since I put this out, and that is the amount, again, we're back to that negativity thing, that is the amount of what can only characteristically be described as jealousy that I've gotten from people since I've put this out. It's unbelievable. It's never happened to me on this scale before where people are sending me emails and leaving comments and whatnot that you can see genuinely reflect the fact that they are pissed off, jealous, and mad because I figured this whole thing out with this, with what I presented in this presentation. It's mad. They, people, there are, people are so, God, I can't believe that people could be you're putting the cart before the horse. I can't believe people would be involved in even seeking the truth and still be attached to that bullshit ego thing. You need to go take a, go fucking get an ounce of mushrooms and go fucking live in the forest for a month and eat that and on survival, nothing but those mushrooms and come back and talk to me again. To let me know how that ego is going. Really? It, it's, I mean, it's sickening. It, it, it's sickening the amount of like just jealousy shit that I've gotten from people. People are fucking mad. Can you believe that? People are fucking mad because I figured this out before they did. Or, the, or they didn't, you know, especially I, I really, it really didn't hit until after part four came out. That's, that's what I got to be honest. The stuff that I cracked in part four, I really started getting it. Because people watched part one, two, and three and they, that shit that I cracked in part four went right over their heads. And that's what really pissed a lot of people off. That's what it was. It wasn't even the first two or three parts. It, it didn't really get anything from that. But after that fourth part came out, and the stuff that I presented at the end of that, you know. Listen, I'm a fucking researcher, man. This is fucking what I do. There's, there's very, I don't know of anybody else. Because a lot of these people who do shows and stuff, they're not even researchers. They're just, they're nothing more than, than just talking heads. They've never done their own research. They've never spent literally decades researching like I have. And if they did any kind of researching at all, they get to a certain point and they just stop. And then it just becomes about doing their podcast or anything. And they just end up re either repeating the same shit they said a hundred times before, or they're <coughs> just repeating the shit they heard on somebody's YouTube channel. But I, the, the researching for me has never stopped, and it never will. That's the only reason why I'm able to keep putting out films and coming up with presentations and coming up with things. You know, something lands in my lap, and I'm able to take all this past research and knowledge and bam, knock it out of the park. I did that with this Mystery Hollywood thing, and I did it back when David Bowie died, you know, putting out that series, you know, exactly one week to the day after he died. I mean, there's there. If you watch, especially the part one of that two part uh, series, Secret Messages, you can also get that in the download shop as well. It's edited together as one complete film. So, like the first part ends, there's credits, and then 
once that ends and part two starts. Um, but seriously, if you watch that, I mean, that's uh, think about the fact that I put that together within one week after David Bowie died. I mean, that's almost for anybody else. That would be years worth of research in there. And I got that thing written. Um, voiceovered, edited, and put out within one week of the death of David Bowie. That's, uh, again, that's Im- <laughs> it's an impossible feat for one person to do all, the- all by themselves. But it's only because the research is the number one thing for me. The research is what drives all of this. I can't imagine getting to that point like every other, you know, because I don't know of anybody else that does a radio show or a podcast or that is an actual active regular researcher. Everybody else is just taking, you know, oh, well, I like, I like what this guy, this is literally how people take what they believe these days. They literally take what they believe based on whichever person on YouTube they like better. You know, so, oh, well, I don't like Josh Reeves' voice. I don't like the way he talks. I don't like the fact that he cusses, so I'm not going to mention him. Yet, you, you'll see these same type of people take shit directly word for word from my show or my film or something, and then never mention my name. That happens a lot. Because the reason why that is, is because they know that I'm right about so many things, yet they disagree with me with the things that they've bought the BS and bought the propaganda and bought the lies and bought the disinformation on. So if they, if they have to admit not only to themselves, but to anybody else that they, agree with something I put out then they have to say oh well what about this isn't this? see they don't want to go there because then that brings their little their little house of cards they built around them crumbling down and uh, listen I gotta say the majority of people out there in that are into this type of stuff I would say about 85 to 90 percent of them are all buying bullshit propaganda and uh you know, it's crazy now, and I mentioned this last time, you know, how proud I am of the fact that, you know, listen, I will, I, I've said this before, I have never been left or right, I've never registered to vote, I've now, I will never, I do, I have known that left-right politics is bullshit since I was 17 years old. I've known it since then. But now, it, you know, now you've got people who are like left-wing conspiracy theorists, and then you, and then you've got people that are the alt right, right wing conspiracy theorists now. And then you have the lonely island over here, me, uh, that isn't either one. But yet, the general public and people and people in general now lump all conspiracy theorists in the same category. And I'm going to say it again for the umpteenth time, man. I'm not a fucking right winger. I'm not an alt writer. Writer. I'm not a left winger. I despise right wing, brainwashed, alt right, Christian, whatever have you, as much as I despise left wing commie pinkos. Okay, I'm against both of them because both of them are against you and I. That's a fact. They want to get you on one side or the other, so you're easy to control, you're easy to manipulate, and mo- more importantly, you're easy to get uh, bought into whatever they're selling this week as far as their agendas. The truth will never lie in a left or right or center political party. It will ne- you will never find it there. You will never find it. I mean, that's why when Obama was in office, I wasn't spending all my time harping on, on Obama stuff. Yeah, when he did fucked up shit, I brought it up and talked about it plenty of times. With the same thing with, with uh, Trump now. The thing I see with Trump now, and, and again, this is the whole thing that, that spawned me originally when I first started doing my radio show back in September 2007. When I first found out about the Council for National Policy, even before that, I had already started to be s- suspicious because I'd already done some research 
you know, even from the early days when I first started, when I was a teenager and I started, uh, 16, you know, 15, 16 years old, started studying the Kennedy assassination. And, um, you know, then I, the, the mainstream or whatever, the truth move that time, I mean, everything just like it is now, every, every conspiracy and everything evil is blamed on left wingers. And yet the right wing involvement in these conspiracies, it never gets brought up. And that's why when I came on the scene and brought the CMP stuff out, that's why I threw the big wrench in the works and why I was the big enemy for the longest time, why I was on six, seven different networks, got fired from them all. Because everything that they have rolled out and brought forth now, they were already planning and instituting back then, and they were getting away with it. And then here comes this fucking... Redheaded guy from Texas just mucking it all up for him. Because this has been the plan all along. These guys are all in bed together. What did I tell you? What did I tell you uh, forever ago about the whole Mueller probe and the Russian thing? What did I tell you? And, and how'd that play out? Again, yet again, sucks being right all the time. Yet again, just like I told you, it played out exactly how I, it's playing out just like I told you it would. They ain't going to fucking reveal shit and they're not going to fucking bring anything down on Trump because if they do, they're going to bring down the left end too because both ends of these guys have all been colluding and been in bed with Russia for literally decades. Literally, de did you hear, what, when was that? I forget when it was. I don't remember what speech it was, but it was like a week or so ago. And Obama said, oh, we are not Obama, but Trump said, uh, Oh, something about, talking about socialism or something. He's talking about Venezuela or, or whatever he was talking about. Uh, that one crazy fucking wild-eyed fucking wench. Uh, I don't know if he was talking about her. But he's basically talking about socialism. America will never go that way. And I just fucking face-palmed right when he said that. I was like, oh, fuck, motherfucker. Do you have any idea what you just did? And all the brainwashed righties and all righties back there pumping their feet. Yay! Trump said America will never go socialist. You fucking asshole. You have any idea what you just did? You just signed our death warrant, bud. You just assured that that's exactly. And again, this whole, I, I just, I wish people would wake up and understand the whole psychological operation of politics. I mean, from, I remember this was when I had only been on air about two years. I remember when Obama got elected. The night of the election, I did this like election night special. It was like a video thing back in the Justin TV days. And uh, I remember saying right then and there, this is the PSYOP president. Even his name is a, is a PSYOP. You know, because that was, everybody was just, was still on fire about Osama bin Laden and 9 11 and everything. And all of a sudden we get a dude with a, a black guy, not only a black president, but a black president with a Muslim sounding name that sounds suspiciously similar to Osama bin Laden, <laughs> Barack Obama, a fucking Muslim name and a black. I mean, what a fucking psyop. But what they do this over and over again. This is what every political cycle and every presidential cycle, it all is the same thing. Repeat, wash, rinse, repeat. It works. They do it over and again. Every, you got to understand that every single, it doesn't, if, if the left wingers get in, then they got in because it's to embolden the right wing and to play the victims and to play the, so they can switch the game and switch the board and flip the board over again and start it again. That's what they're doing here. That's what these stupid motherfuckers that think Trump is for them and is looking out for their be best interests don't get is that he doesn't see, they don't see that each new puppet they put in that position is only there to make the next person, the next regime that comes in that much worse. All these fucking, uh, it just blows my mind to hear these, these right wing these conspiracy theorists people now whether it's Alex Jones or anyone, they all follow the Alex Jones script. None of these people are doing any thinking of this stuff on their own. 
all they talk about is everything, every conspiracy and everything bad comes from George Soros and the left wingers and that it's all just a big pedophile thing. Nobody on the right wing is involved in pedophilia at all. No, no, not at all. It's only left wingers and it's all pedophile conspiracy and Trump is innocent and Trump's going after these guys. Rinse, repeat. That's all they fucking talk about now. And again, as I showed you in The Secret Right, Volume 2, back in 2011, these guys have been involved in sex trafficking, child trafficking, all this shit. Going back, the newest, the latest stuff coming out, dude. Didn't I just tell you, remember back, uh, what, last month? After the Super Bowl? Remember I was talking about Robert Kraft and, and he's big buddies with Trump? I heard some right-wing conspiracy guy the other day saying, oh, well, Trump's never been connected to anybody involved in these sex trafficking stuff. You can't show an example. You can't? Well, number one, Robert Kraft, now, that seals that. Robert, Robert Kraft, the fucking owner of the page, got caught at a fucking rub and tug in fucking Florida. A fucking rub and tug. And guess what? The rub and tug just happened to be connected to... Number one, organized crime. And number two, sex trafficking, human trafficking. Dude, you're a billionaire. You could pay any woman you wanted to do anything you want to you in privacy, in secret, in a hotel, at a place you own, something no one would ever fucking know about it. Why would a billionaire owner go all the way to, uh, from New England, go all the way to fucking Florida to go to some little rub and tug? Be, it, well, the reason is, is because that's, that's a hookup. That's somebody they're connected to. The organized crime connection of it. That's why you would do that. It's the only reason. Because you're not having to pay for it because you're already, you're already paying for it in other ways. Because you're connected to the other, these other people. I, I'm telling you, this is going to be a much bigger... This is definitely a much bigger story than I think even people are even giving credit to it now, this, this Robert Kraft thing. This thing's going to be... There's going to be more names. There already has been a few more names coming out to this. But, I mean, as far as Trump goes, I mean, my God. You know, he's, he's buddies with Kraft. Fucking uh, uh, Brady had the MAGA hat back there and the fucking... Uh, in his locker thing. Uh, it's just hilarious. Not even a month after the Super Bowl, he gets busted at a rub and tug. Has the, he's got the same East Coast organized crime mafia connections as Trump does. And, you know, listen, had it not been for my research into this spellcaster stuff, man, I would never even put this together. But because I had done all that research into uh, Kashagi, Adnan Kashagi, which I first revealed in The Secret Right Volume 2 in 2011, and the connections to Genesis, Intermedia, and all the, you know, the Genesis Communications Net Radio Network and all that stuff, and, and connected him uh, to the CIA and to the Genesis stuff, and then with Jones. And then the stuff that I uncovered uh, connecting him to the whole fall, fall McCartney thing and uh, Heather Mills. And I mean, listen, the Sultan of Brunei and, and uh, Adnan Khashoggi were, you know, in their day back in those days in the eighties and nineties, those were the top human trafficking prostitution guys on the planet, as well as the top arms dealer and probably top drug dealers and stuff as well. And they, they had connections and, ins and outs to all the intelligence agencies. And uh, like I said, I've speculated with that, that I, I believe wholeheartedly from my research that uh, that's why Freddie Mercury was eliminated, given the HIV uh, or whatever it was. I don't even believe they, they, they claim it was HIV, but there's never been any evidence to prove that. Never, none, ever. Because Freddie never said it out loud. Again, don't even get me started on that. I talked about that after that bullshit movie came out. Which, again, as you can see from all the stuff that's happened now, I was 100% right about. 
uh, and who did they get to direct it? They got a fucking another fucking child molesting pedophile, uh, human trafficking motherfucker. I mean, that's not a coincidence, folks. That's not a coincidence that they got Brian Singer to direct that movie and all the stuff's come out of him. Not a coincidence. Freddie wrote that song, Kashagi, uh, Kashagi Ship. That ended up being sold to the Sultan of Brunei and then ended up being sold to Donald Trump. And that's where all the fucking uh, prostitution and sex trafficking shit was going down on was that fucking ship. And uh, I believe that's why they uh, eliminated Freddie Mercury. Because he was getting ready to expose him. That I'll, I'll, I'll do you one better, too. I think that... Uh, at least one person in Queen was also involved in that. I believe John Deacon, the bass player, was involved in that stuff and some of the research I've done looked look at that stuff. That's why he dropped off the radar. He will not do interviews with anybody about anything without about any subject, but especially Queen. Quit playing back in the 90s. Has become a complete and total utter recluse. There's been... Uh, you know, speculation about him being gay for many, many years, and but many people tried to write that off. Oh, he had five kids and he's married. Doesn't matter. Doesn't mean jack shit. When you, I mean, I've, I've let me tell you something. I've done a lot of research and listened to a lot of interviews, a lot of the stuff. You know, dug deep into Queen for many, many years, even before I was doing this. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there. A lot of unanswered question with John. You know, like why? Why did he? Why did he walk out of the studio unannounced when they were recording the Works album? Not the Works album, I believe it was the... Uh, was that the one that had One Vision on it? I think it was. Basically, he just walked out and, and, and in the middle of... Uh, the, of a studio for a recording session, and we were like, well, where's... Where's John? Oh, well, we don't know. And then he came up with some story that he went to... to he went on a skiing trip to Bali. Another thing nobody ever talks about and nobody's ever given a proper explanation for is the, is the final ever Queen performance in 1986 at Nebworth Park in, in England. Huge, massive capacity crowd. And, I mean, we know that there, it's, it's very strange. I, I've never quite known, there's something enigmatic about Nebworth I've never been able to quite figure out what it is. Um, whether it's cursed or I don't know. It almost seems like there's like, it almost does seem like it's almost cursed. I, I, I don't really know. But it's just kind of strange that uh, it was a huge turning point for many bands that played there in a very negative way. Like, well, I mean, it ended up being the, the last Led Zeppelin show ever was the Nebworth show. And John Bonham died not long after that, and that was the last Led Zeppelin show there ever was. And for many years, there was no footage. There was, you know, crappy home shot footage. Uh, but back in like 2003, 2004, they put out this Led Zeppelin um, DVD set. It was like a two or three disc set. And on the last disc of that, it had the first, you know, for the first time, they had compiled all the footage they could get from the, from that last Nebworth show. Um, and same thing with Queen. That ended up being Queen's last show ever was at Nebworth in 86. We know that there are professionally shot uh, pieces of footage in the entire concert from that. And yet out of all the things they've ever released, they have to this day never released a full high quality version you can only really find you can find a lot of fan shot clips bootleg shot clips from the crowd a lot of audio shot uh, recorded that way too but outside of some of the queen home videos stuff like i have on uh on on laser disc even like the rare live and all that there's only like maybe there's like a clip of radio gaga that's maybe all in just maybe a few short clips or anything else but not much else, which doesn't make sense. You know, you're like, well, why wouldn't they release that? It was the last Queen show ever. Uh, they put on, you know, a hell of a performance. They've released 
two other concerts from that Magic Tour, the Live at Wembley 86 and the uh, uh, Magic Live, which was from the Budapest show. You know, you think they would release that. A massive crowd, or the biggest crowd ever they ever had. It just doesn't make sense. But there's a piece of footage. It's very interesting. Queen themselves have never formally addressed this. Um, and if they've ever been asked th- about it, it's never appeared and never in any final edits of any interviews they've ever done. It's never been in any of their documentaries. It's very mysterious, though. At the end of the show, at the Nebworth Park performance with Queen in 86 on the Magic Tour, John Deacon, the bass player, inexplicably at, uh, at the last, at the end of, you know, We Are the Champions or the end of when they play God Save the Queen or whatever at the end. John Deacon can seem, uh, seem visibly upset, takes his bass guitar and fucking javelin throws that motherfucker through the bass amps, knocking all the bass amps. You can see just visibly angry. And uh, nobody has ever addressed this, and nobody has ever said why. What was he upset about? Because at that point, nobody knew that was the last Queen show. Nobody in the band. He hadn't even told them them yet about, and wouldn't for another year, uh, about him You know, supposedly having HIV and AIDS and all that. So it'd be easy to say, well, he was just mad because he knew that was Queen's last show and he was upset, so he threw the bass up against because he was mad and he knew that was it. Eh. Nobody knew at that point. The other piece of speculation I've heard on this, not from anybody being the band, but just seen online, uh, that also doesn't hold water to me, is that somebody in the crowd, way back in the back of the crowd somewhere, uh, during Queen's performance, uh, was stabbed and killed during the show. And that John was mad about this, so he threw his bass up against his amps at the end of the show. That doesn't hold water either, because if you go and do the research on that and look into that, it was way, way back in the back part of the cr- North 40 of that crowd. They didn't stop the show or anything because of this happening, and nobody even found out that it happened until like a couple of days later in the news. Queen were up there with 100 billion watts of fucking amplifiers playing a concert. You know, if somebody gets hurt or whatever at a concert, do you think somebody comes over and goes to the bass player of all people? And, hey, somebody just got stabbed and killed out there. Come on. There's no logical explanation for it. But John Deacon's son has, has, has turned out to be gay. And, uh, yeah, I, I, there's, there's no question that this, uh, this child trafficking stuff with the elites has been going on for a long time. It's not exclusive to one party, left or right, but yet constantly we're fed disinformation on this stuff. We're fed lies. We're fed, you know, net with this queen movie. We're fed alternate events of the stories. And, you know, we're presented this movie that from the first two seconds of the film starts trying to reinforce the Freddie had AIDS thing on you in a very deceptive way. Uh, it's, you know, it, it it's sickening. It's disgusting. And, uh, you know, yet there's so many other people out there that continue. Listen, this is one of the things I've uncovered. The Especially with touring bands and touring acts. There are, I mean, the, the music industry has used touring acts as basically a front organization for drug trafficking and for... Uh, human trafficking, sex trafficking for decades. And it's pretty clear that when some of these guys, that's why they want to keep these guys loaded, man. That's why so many of these bands, it's not just because it's a cliche, oh, six drugs and rock and roll. No, they put out that disinfo cliche thing to justify 
their operations. Many of these these uh, touring acts are literally, they are just fronts for massive sex and drug trafficking operations. And a lot of these artists, you know, who, when they first get in, buy into the stuff and they get fucked up and they become, you know, they just stay distracted by, uh, by the debauchery and by the drugs and the sex and the rock and roll. But some of them eventually get clean and then they get clean and they go, oh, wait a minute. They start to discover what's really going on. And I think this is why you get so many that either get suicided, die in mysterious plane crashes, whatever, whatever mysterious crazy fate, and then it just becomes this meme or this idea, well, you know, that's just rock stars, you know, they're self-destructive. They get into the drugs and everything, and then they kill themselves, or they, oh, deep, no. No. Now, a lot of these guys found out, this, listen, you're going to see what I'm going to present to you coming up in these Spellcaster films. I'm telling you, I uncovered something with the death of Randy Rhodes. Nobody's uncovered. And, uh, I mean, it's still going on today. But that's what was going on then. Look, at you want to know, you want to know about that shit? I mean, you're going to see it in Spellcasters too, but... If you're looking into the Randy Rhodes thing, look into the house where the plane crash happened. Look into the guy that owned it. Look into his uh, bus and airplane company that he owned. That was the bus and airplane company that provided the tour buses for Ozzy Osbourne and his tour when Randy Rhodes was with him. The two tours they did. Who hooked? Who had that connection? Sharon Osborne, who who gave her that connection to that guy, her father Don Arden, and he's connections to the CIA, organized crime, and my six, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That even the even the fucking bus driver and the guy that ended up flying the, the supposedly flying the plane that killed Randy Rhodes, he, that guy was uh, coked out of his mind when it was going down. There was so much coke going around. I mean, that none of the rest of the guys really talk about doing that much coke. Even in the rock band. I've heard interviews. I've read their books. All those guys that were around during those times. Rudy Sarzo and uh, uh, Lee Kerslake, Bob Daisley, um, the keyboard player. The keyboard player guy, is the, he has pictures of, all, of the crash as it happened. Because he was standing out there taking pictures as it happened. He's never released those pictures to anybody. And uh, he's the guy that the chief FAA investigator on the scene of the crash told, hey man, if it makes you feel any better, this was no accident. This was premeditated. But yeah, there's this whole, and it all ties into this, this guy who owned this trucking, who owned this uh, company that owned the tour buses and owned the airplanes. I connected him directly to the CMP and members of the Council for National Policy as well. This was going back even when Don Arden, Don Arden, uh, uh, Sharon's dad, even before she had Ozzy Solo back when he was in Black Sabbath was going on then. I got all the stories and all the reports. Uh, these small planes, just like this company owned, you know, being flown and flying the Coke. They were using Black Sabbath was one of the bands they were using back, back then. That's why they were all coked out. I've seen interviews with Geezer Butler. Well, well, nobody really knew. Well, the coke was coming from. We just every day we'd get about three cereal boxes in that would be full of cocaine, and we just do it cereal boxes. We had cereal bowls of cocaine. That's the whole thing, and it goes on today. It continues to happen today. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it, it's just sickening, though. The amount of disinformation. Uh, you, you Listen, you got to be careful, guys. I mean, almost every video I watch, if I just watch a, a, a random video on YouTube, 
that's supposedly about these type of topics, it's 99% of the time fucking disinfo. It's worse now than it ever has been, and it's only going to continue to get bad. Uh, it's, it's, it really is just fucking unbelievable. Oh, what else? Well, let's, I'm trying my best to get into all this stuff. I'm trying to see what all I've got here to discuss with you. Let's see. Oh, so the, uh, yeah, the Oscars were last night. Boy, I just had it on the background. I, I, like, it was over, and I was like, did I just miss the whole thing? Like, it was that boring. I mean, all these fucking... It's, it's pretty crazy, man. It's pretty wild to see what's happening now. And uh, all this stuff is by design. I just sit back and laugh, really. I mean, we, we are seeing the demise of Western civilization happen right in front of us, ladies and gentlemen. It's an interesting time to be alive. Um, that's Believe it or not, I know there's some sort of, I know there's a bit of... Uh, you know, some people take a uh, take joy and take a bit of solace in, you know, some of this stuff that's happening right now, and they think it's a good thing because it serves their belief system or, you know, makes them feel good or whatever. Man, all this stuff that's happening right now, none of this stuff is an accident. I mean, it just isn't. This is a part of a very calculated plan to bring down the United States so that other outside countries can gain a foothold here in the United States and divide us up in all these little nation states and crap. I mean, it's none of this stuff, you know, all this stuff happening with, with Hollywood and the stuff that's being exposed and the, and the me too stuff, you know, all, none of this stuff is an accident. None of it. And, as much as you and I might, you know, on the, on the surface of this, seem to take some joy and some satisfaction in, stun of, in some of it, you know, when especially when some of these scumbags get taken down, you as you know as great as it feels and it's good when some of these guys get taken down, you ha- cannot lose sight of the fact that this is all a part of a much larger operation going on, ladies and gentlemen in order to justify the bringing down of the United States. Obama did his part for that. Trump is now doing his part for that. And uh, that's what all of this is about. That's why all of this is happening right now. None of this is happening by accident right now. It's not like all of this is just coincidence. This is all happening right now all at once. Robert Kraft is not the biggest name involved in prostitution case. Uh, Patriot owner Robert Kraft has been named as one of these, one of those involved in a prostitution sting in Florida, but he's far from the only one involved. He may not be the only famous person involved. Uh, yeah, what are the other names that have come out? I guess that article disappeared off my stack. Yeah, either way. Well, um, yeah, one was like a city corp guy. The other was like uh, some golfer guy. I'm not sure. Again, none of this stuff happening by accident. The R. Kelly thing, R. Kelly going down to, uh, this is not an accident. None of this is. And many of these guys are just patsies. They're just, they're just Oswalds. They're fall guys. I mean, for how many decades did they keep R. Kelly? Everybody knew about it. They kept him propped up and protected. And then you're telling me now, after all this, he he can't come up with $100,000 to get out of bed. I guess he has now, or somebody did now, but. So he's, so let me get this straight. He was protected for all those years. 
because he was success, he was a successful recording artist, right? He was making plenty of money for Sony, right? This is the narrative we're being we're being sold. But now he's broke, doesn't have any money. And so now is the time when we bring him down as a sex offender. There, none of this makes any sense. The only thing that makes sense is that he was getting ready to blow the whistle on something much larger. You know, I mean, please, if you think R. Kelly is some cr criminal genius mastermind, mastermind of, of human trafficking and, and sex abuse, give me a break. Give me a fucking break. And all of a sudden he's, oh, well, I'm broke. I don't have any money. I can't even afford 100000 to get that. Come on. Now, I, 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 I think that uh, certainly not all, but I think some of these guys that are getting taken down are getting taken down because I mean, look, Cosby, too. I think, I think a lot of these guys have been inside the elite of the elite stuff. They know who else is involved in this stuff. And at the highest levels, and these guys are getting taken down and having their... That's why they're going after their credibility first. A lot of these guys are not getting tried in a court of law where they're innocent until proven guilty. These guys are getting tried in the court of public opinion where they are guilty as soon as they are accused, regardless of how much information or how much truth there is in here, how much proof. They don't even need proof. Now, if somebody accuses you of this stuff, you are guilty. You are entitled to have your entire career ruined. Never to be seen or heard from again. All it takes is for these people to accuse you. And it doesn't matter if there's any evidence to back it up at all. I mean, just like what's happened recently, the most recent one with Ryan Adams, the singer, songwriter Ryan Adams. You know, his label now is not putting out two albums he was going to have put out this year. Um, he all his uh, his equipment like uh, you know, pedals, guitars, you know, all those endorsements gone, and all he got was accused. All he got was accused. Not one single shred of evidence to prove any of this stuff. Now, the one accusation of him sexting with a girl that was supposedly fourteen. Now that's a different situation altogether. But let's be honest. Look at the other stuff that he's been accused of doing. See, uh, that's the same thing with the stuff with, like, Weinstein and stuff. You know, listen, it's not illegal. It is not illegal to tell a woman that you can further their career and that you might be able to further their career if they sleep with you. And then they sleep with you and then you don't further their career. That's not illegal. That's just a scumbag. That's just a piece of shit. Being a piece of shit and being a scumbag, though, is not illegal. <coughs> Unfortunately. That's the thing. And that's why these women are like, they know they can't get them on anything, so what do they do? They're just going to go after them with the accusations and bring them down that way. But let's be honest, you know, uh, nobody put a gun to Mandy Moore's head and, and made her marry that guy and be married to him for that long. She did it. I mean, she's a gold bricker altogether. Nobody's bringing up the fact that as soon as she divorced fucking uh, Ryan M, she immediately went and married the guy from the crappy band Dawes, and now she's doing a record with him, and he's masterminding her career the way she wanted uh, Ryan Adams to do. But again, you know, hey, listen, if a woman wants to get to get get ahead in Hollywood, and she knows there's a Weinstein guy there that if she fucked, she could be getting in some big movies. That's, that's not illegal. And it's not illegal for the guy that fucks the woman and doesn't do anything with her career. That's not illegal either. Is it scumbag, bullshit, morally wrong activity? 100%. 100%. But again, so far, and the listen, the FBI's opened up an investigation into Ryan Adams <coughs> over just the accusations about... Uh, 
sexting with a 14 year old. Now, according to him, <coughs> she told him he was 18. Now, that brings up a whole other thing. What do you do in that situation? You know, if you're having sexting with someone who's told you they're eight, they're of age, and then later, years later, it comes out that they were not. You know, what do you, what do, you do in that situation? I mean, you know, he was lied to. I, I don't know. Um, I'm not defending the guy. There's a lot of things that seem to appear, but but again, all the women that are making the accusations are all, all the only reason they got with him and had sex with the guy is because he told them that he could help them with their career. And if he didn't choose to do that after they fucked him, again, there's nothing illegal about that. that there's no laws that say that you can't say, tell a woman, yeah, baby, I could get you, I could help you get your career going on, you know? All you got to do is take, take a ride on this suck stick down here for a minute and bam. I mean, if a woman's dumb enough to believe that they can, that they can sleep with anybody and it will further their career, that's on them. But that's what this whole thing is based on. I don't think you should be able to ruin someone's career based on speculation and hearsay without showing evidence and proof, but that's what's going on now. And this is all a part of this thing where when you look at what people are being named in this, it just seems like these people are patsies and Oswalds. They're, they're, this is happening to them because, yes, they are scumbags, but they have information and knowledge and have seen things from other people that are even more powerful scumbags And so if they can take these people out first and completely damage their, their credibility, if Ryan Adams or R. Kelly or whoever comes back later and says, well, you know, I'm being accused of this, this, and this, but you ought to see what th this person, this person, this person are doing. I only w was able to do this because I was enabled by people more powerful than me. That Nobody's going to believe that because at that point, their credibility doesn't matter if they're telling the truth. Their credibility is done. They have been tried in the court of public opinion as a scumbag, and that's it. I mean, R. Kelly could produce a locker full of fucking videotapes showing George Bush and Barack Obama and fucking, you know, Trump and Dan Quayle and Steven Spielberg, like, you know, all you can eat stem cell baby head buffet. And motherfuckers would be like, oh, well, we don't care. We don't want that. That, that can't be true. That's, it's R. Kelly saying that. We know what a fucking scumbag he is. This is without question, and you can just tell, th th this is. Again, the, the, all of this sex trafficking and all of this, uh, you know, uh, all of this stuff it go, it goes beyond party lines. You got people left, right, and center involved in this stuff. But it has become a politically motivated weapon now in order to get certain people out of the power elite and to get other people in that position. And meanwhile, they're all involved in this stuff. Why do you think all this stuff just started happening now under Trump? And again, all y'all that think Trump is bad, let me tell you, you got no idea what they want to bring in here next. And just like I said, we will never, just like when I heard him say, we will never let socialism come to this country. That's when you're just like, well, that's it. That's a death knell. That's it. Right? That's, a, that's an assured guarantee you we're going to become a fucking socialist nightmare country. And historically, every single country that started out as a republic, became socialist later on. The Union of Soviet Socialist Republic, the Republic of China, these were all started out as republics. Constitu you know, constitutional republics, everything else. We, that's where they're going to go, and that's where they're going to take it, folks. And that's what all of this crap where they're trying to do away with individuality and to, to try and make 
do away with anything unique. They want to make everybody the same. One sex, one race, one religion. That's, you know, people who've been screaming about the one world system for years, man, don't understand that this is how they're bringing it about. The homogenization of humankind. And there are just so many people out there now who aren't even interested in finding the real truth anymore, who've just given up and who have sold their souls to partisan politics. And everything in about being about either being left or right. It's a facade. It's a lie. Here's another... Listen, I mean, this shit, it, it just... It's on such a level now that people who've been th thinking about this stuff and been into this stuff for a long time can't wrap their minds around it because they're, it's moved to another level. You have to evolve your thinking on this stuff, folks, or you're going to be left in the, la in the last decade and you're never going to come back. Here's another great example. CIA's Black Panther tweets during Oscars leaves fans confused. The agency sent out a dozen or so tweets about the fictional technology in the film. Now, this happened last night during, during the Oscars. Listen to this. Some Twitter users were a bit confused during the Oscars on Sunday as the Central Intelligence Agency tweeted about the fictional technology behind the Marvel superhero film Black Panther. The agency sent out a dozen or so tweets about the science featured in the Oscar-winning film and even asked for advice on which Black Panther technology its 2.5 million followers would like to see used in the real world. It also tweeted a series of photos and poll questions to, quote, get your views on the feasibility of Wakandan technology today, referring to the fictional African nation where much of the film takes place. The agency, which has received backlash for meddling in African affairs in the past, what? Meddling in African affairs. How is... <laughs> what? I'm not defending the CIA here, but how in the fuck is the CIA asking weird theoretical questions about what technology from the movie Black Panther they like to see used in the real world? How is that, quote-unquote, meddling in African affairs? Uh, just, it's unbelievable. I mean, anything these days. The agency, which received backlash for meddling in African affairs in the past, also linked a press release from a CIA scientist named Rebecca, who said it had researched Black Panther communication technology. In hashtag Black Panther, a unique metal called vibranium helped the fictional African nation of Wakanda become the most technologically advanced country on the planet. The agency tweeted along with the Oscars hashtag. The vibranium in Black Panther suit protects him from the kinetic damage, and vibranium sneakers are both super quiet and amazing shock absorbers for jumping. Those would be great for spies, right? Too bad vibranium isn't real. The Bizarre Live blog racked up hundreds of likes and retweets with the post through some Twitter users for a loop. As it says the... Uh, The agency called the social media event a part of its real R-E-E-L versus real R-E-A-L series, which aims to, quote, demystify the CIA's mission by comparing what's seen on TV to what happens in reality. What? <coughs> what? You're fucking kidding me. Jesus fucking Christ. Demystify the CIA's mission by... This is, this is classic disinformation, psychological warfare, cognitive dissonance. Jesus. To get people confused... Again, they fictionalize the truth so the truth seems like fiction. That's just like I talked about in my new five-part series. You know, these like Transformers and all these movies getting Pentagon and CIA script approval in exchange, they get, being they get to approve the content of what's in the script, the CIA and the Pentagon does, and in exchange, 
They are given advanced technologies to use in the films that the government and the military already have. So that then when people hear about these technologies and weapons, they think it's just fake and oh, that's from Transformers. Like I told you not too long ago, I had the story about, remember about the Chinese railgun? And people still saying that the railgun is a fucking myth and they've had the railgun and been actively using that motherfucker for well over 10 years. It's been reported. And then they roll it out in the second Transformers movie. That's what this is about. So the reason that they're asking these questions it tells you right there, yes, we do have something like a vibranium that the CIA has secretly or something of that nature. And yes, probably a lot of the technology and stuff like what they had in Black Panther, the CIA has. And oftentimes this is how they decide what the next thing is they're going to roll out and admit to the public that they have because they're trying to gauge what the public's limit is as far as what they'll believe and what they'll buy without asking too many questions like, uh, where the fuck did you get that? Obviously, that's got to be alien technology or something. This is how they're doing it. This is how they're doing it. And, and also, as a recruitment thing. Oh, don't you want, wouldn't you want to join the CIA so you can use, you know, Wakanda technology? I mean, this is massive psychological operation, folks. To further convince people and to further, just like they said here, to blur those lines, real, the name of this thing is real, they're calling this operation real versus real. So you don't know whether what you're seeing on the real, R-E-E-L, the real of film is R-E-A-L, or what you're seeing in the real world is being taken from the real R-E-E-L world, the fake movie world. The blurring of the two and keeping people confused as to what's real and what isn't is one of the major operations of Hollywood TV and all of this stuff. The fucking Nazis had Star Trek technology before the end of World War II, ladies and gentlemen. It's been documented and written about ad nauseum. They had... Uh, disintegration weapons they were working on uh, hypersonic, hyper, you know, all this stuff. It's been written about, and the CIA had uh, iPhone-type communication devices that were like iPhones in the 1970s. Can you imagine if you would have showed someone or told somebody about something like an iPhone back in the 1970s? Shit, Star Trek didn't even, or Star Wars didn't even think that up. They didn't even have any shit like that in Star Wars when it came out in 77. You would have been looked at as beyond science fiction back then. This is how far ahead and how far behind they keep us. They do little cute things like this. Oh, what, what, what kind of technology would you like to see the CIA use? Hmm. And they act all smug and cute about it. And meanwhile, they've got technology 50 years ahead of what anybody knows about. Stuff that would, if, people, you heard, if people knew about it right now, they would, of course, say. That's a conspiracy theory. That can't exist. That technology can't possibly exist. <coughs> this is exactly where they want to keep you at. I'm getting uh, lots, of, lots of fun questions about this. Lots of people ask me about this. Uh, even family members and stuff, I'm getting questions from on Facebook about this. It's out of control. I've heard it too. Look, again, I, I, don't, have all the, I don't have all the answers, man. And all, some of this stuff I can only speculate on. Officials are silent as unexplained mystery booms on the rise around the U.S. What is behind the mystery boom phenomenon North America is currently experiencing? I've been tracking reports of these unexplained explosions for a few years now. And they're without a doubt on the rise, as this week we have a startlingly high number of mystery booms were reported throughout North America. It began on January 31st when residents of three separate counties in Tennessee reported hearing a loud boom 
around 11.30 a.m., local chemical plants were contacted but reported uh, nothing anomalous. Authorities in Bradley, McKinn, and Polk counties are still investigating what could have caused such a powerful noise. I'm getting reports this happened in East Texas and all over Texas, all over the country. That same day, local news in North Carolina reported that people in Wake and Franklin counties have been calling law enforcement agencies to keep uh, to report unexplained loud blasts and booms that keep them awake at night. Two homeowners even reported that the booms are so powerful that they have briefly lost power as a result of the tremors. So far for the Wake County Sheriff's Office has been uh, unable to pinpoint the source of the booms. People in Cranston and Johnston, Rhode Island, reported strange booms loud enough to shake their entire houses on February 2nd. The next night on February 3rd, residents of Park Slope, Brooklyn, heard a powerful anomalous boom and notified the NYPD and FDNY. While a manhole explosion was suspected in that case, neither agency could identify the cause of the explosion-like sound. On February 4th, local CBS affiliate Ford WWL reported that people in uh, Huron and River Ridge, Louisiana, have been hearing strange cannon-like sounds that wake them up at night. Residents say the sounds have been going on for weeks, and nobody seems to know what causes them. Um, River Ridge resident Crystal Roddy told 4WWL that the sounds sound like something is dropping and something big landed on the ground. Hmm. According to the report, Louisianians say that the booms are becoming more frequent. On February 5th, Philadelphians are were once again wondering what could be causing mysterious explosions, this time a series of them. Philadelphia was rocked by a series of mystery booms exactly one week ago, and both incidents have yet to be explained. The, uh, you know, and listen, I'm getting a lot of people, a lot of people ask me about this, a lot of people, a lot of people hearing this. Again, uh, I don't, you know, I don't have all the answers. Biggest thing everybody asks me is, is it aliens? Um, no, I don't think it's aliens. Um, I got two opinions. I got two theories of, of what this is. Again, I don't have all the answers. I don't know everything. If I did, if I knew everything, I wouldn't be fucking struggling to make it here month to month to month. But I got to tell you, uh, two things I think it is, just based on my own research and looking at this stuff. Um, God damn. I, see, I hate even saying this shit. Because then it becomes, Josh Reeves says this, this, and this, and, I'm, and the part where I said, this is speculation, gets left out. I, 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 you know, I fucking hate that. I don't know. I don't have all the answers. I'm speculating here, okay? Uh, I think it's either A, something that's been going on for a long time, which is there has been a secret space war going on out in space where offensive and tactical space-based weapons have been shooting down craft attempting to enter Earth's atmosphere for quite some time, and for some reason over the past couple of years, it has ra ramped up exponentially, and this is the reason behind the whole Trump Space Force thing, uh, that there has been a real space war going on for many, many years. Once the real space war is over, they will then create the fake false flag staged alien invasion scenario. Um, as I've talked about many times, again, to sell us on the idea of one world government and global unity and the brotherhood of man and, you know, to fight off this invading outside force like Reagan talked about in front of the UN in the 80s. But really what it'll be is a, a lie to sell us on the installation of these offensive space-based weapons that will then be pointed back down to the ground at us after the stage alien invasion thing happens in order to keep us in a globally enslaved state. That's A. B, um, there are, this is theory B for these, uh, ex explanation for these explosions. B, there are massive, um, you can look these up. They exist. They're real. They're not a conspiracy theory. 
massive nuclear powered uh, tunnel boring equipment is being deployed throughout the entire continental U.S. right now as we speak in conjunction and to add on to already existing secret underground military bases and cities uh, in order to prepare for a continuity of civilization in the event of some event happening in the not-too-distant future that they know about, that they're keeping their fucking mouth shut about, uh, that will render the surface of planet Earth uninhabitable. And there are massive tunneling, these massive tunneling equipment, when they use this stuff, I mean, this stuff bores, they can bore through and seal solid bedrock. And a lot of this stuff, they produce the sounds that sound like sonic booms and and can cause seismic activity as well. Um, if you look at, you know, uh, theory A that I talked about, that there's been this ongoing space war that they've kept in secret that they're going to, once they're done with, use to create the fake one they're going to sell us on. I mean, look at all the stuff that's... Uh, there's tons of news reports, man. Uh, I think some... Giant stone balls in South America. My David Hatcher Children's impersonation. No, there were some fucking metal balls that came out of the sky and were found recently and fell in South America. Uh, other mysterious metal-looking things have come crashing down. There's all sorts of, uh, you know, people just attributed to meteorites and stuff like that. Stuff, space junk coming out of the sky. Strange, mysterious metallic objects washing up on shore. On oceans, there's something going on up there. There's stuff being, there that's been going sh that's been shot down. Uh, what was it, the recent Russian recent Russian report about anomalous, unidentified uh, activity going on in the upper atmosphere? That stuff's been going on for a long time too. I've seen that kind of stuff. I mean, look at this footage. You can see some of this footage has been shot from you know spacecraft, space shuttles, and and uh, stuff like that. You know, people always call them, assume that all UFOs are all, you know, little flying discs and craft. But when you look at some of this stuff that's been shot from some of these uh, space shuttle missions and the uh, uh, space station missions and stuff, these things don't appear, they look like sperm. These appear to be like organic creatures out in space that feed off of lightning and electricity, electrical storms on Earth. I mean, there's pictures of them. You can see the lightning happening on Earth, and you see these things that look like swimmers, like little sperm, like they're swimming through water, and they fucking surround where the lightning and stuff is. I, I can't tell you how many UFOs and stuff like that I've seen during lightning storms out, out and about. I've seen those things fly in. They look like orbs of light, and they fly into lightning and fly into lightning storms and, and pull energy from them. I mean, that's the, thing, that's the thing about space, man. Nobody wants to talk about. It's, it's just, it's not what we're being told it is. Is Silicon Valley's quest for immortality a fate worse than death? Funded by elites, researchers believe they're closer than ever to tweaking the human body so we can live forever or quite a bit longer. China's first emperor ordered his subjects to search for the elixir of life in a quest for immortality in the 16th century in France. Nobles would drink gold in a bid to extend their lifespans. Gilgamesh, the Sumerian king, at the heart of humanity's earliest epic poem, found a magic herb, but a snake ate it. In 2015, a woman on the MTV series True Life, I'm obsessed with staying young, bathed in pig blood. In 2019, the quest for everlasting life is largely, though not always, more scientific. Funded by Silicon Valley elites, researchers believe they are closer than ever to tweaking the human body so that we can finally live forever, or quite a bit longer, even as some worry about pseudoscience in the sector. Scientists and entrepreneurs are working on a range of techniques from attempting to stop cells aging to the practice of injecting young blood into old people, a process denounced as quackery by the Federal Drug, Drug Administration this week. 
That's what the enthusiasts call super longevity. A number of billionaires have pumped money into research that aims to keep people fighting fit as they age. Google's, Google's founder, Sergey Brin and Larry Page, have pumped millions into Calico, a secretive health venture which aims to solve death. And again, this is all a part of that. You know, Sabrina Brzezinski laid this shit out. The technological, what was it? The, uh, the technological technocracy, I think was the name of his book. Something like that. Where he talked about in the future how people wouldn't work jobs to attain wealth and status like they do now. It would be, you know, this technological feudalist system where people would want to gain money so that they would have access to these life extension technologies and that people who had, he predicted all this back in the 1960s. And talked about how in the future people wouldn't spend their money on, you know, trying to be, you know, attain status. Those who attained the most money would have access to the life extension technologies that poor people wouldn't have. And this is, you know, this is the part where human evolution gets hijacked by the rich. You know, this is not about the continuity of the species. This is about a continuity of themselves. And, uh, and that's the thing about, you know, if these guys were doing this, now they're not doing this to extend, you know, come on. Yeah, I want, I want Takashi 6 9 and, and I want so-and-so whoever to have a long life too. Bullshit. These motherfuckers are all about themselves because they feel they're elite to have gotten where they are and they want to continue that and, uh, and build new societies off of basically that are all seeded from themselves. That's really what they want to do. Uh, scientists fear into mankind, not decades away, but much sooner. The study noted the fall of the Roman Empire and the equally, if not more advanced, Han. Mirian and Gupta empires, as well as so many advanced Mesopotamian empires, are all testimony to the fact that advanced, sophisticated, complex, and creative civilizations can be both fragile and impermanent. Well, there also comes that thing where so many, I've talked about where so many of these people in these civilizations uh, attained a high level of technology and then disappeared. How do you explain that? That's the other thing. And uh, this is exactly why the elites are obsessed with stargates and these portals and, and why they're obsessed with finding secrets in the ancient archaeological stuff and keeping it from the public. Again, this is not about the greater knowledge of mankind. This is about the greater knowledge of their people and the elite and keeping this all of themselves. That, that is the war. That's always been the war. That's always what we've been up against here, and it has not changed. It has not changed. We got to expose this, uncover this information, uncover this data, and then release it to the world. Everybody should have access. Now, how that gets used, you know, again, that's the whole thing you can argue about all day long. But that's also where free will comes in. You know, everybody should be allowed the knowledge of all of this stuff, and every single person should be allowed to determine for themselves whether or not they want to use that technology or not. If you want to emerge with a machine and become immortal, uh, it, it, when that becomes available, you should have every right to choose whether you want to do that or not do that as Jeff Bezos or fucking anybody else. That's the whole thing. They are taking our free will and our decision to choose away from us by keeping the knowledge of this stuff from us altogether. And that's one thing that's been reiterated to me. No matter how much research I've done in all this stuff is that from the very beginning, advanced knowledge has been kept from us and it's no different than it is today and the reason and the methodology behind it is exactly the same 
is to keep the true knowledge of the universe in the hands of only a small amount of people. And it's been my mission to fucking at least try and even it up a little bit. Whatever I find out about this shit, that's why I let you know about it. That's why I talk about this stuff. That's why I make these presentations as crazy and as outlandish as it may seem sometimes because that's the kind of thing, that's right where they want you, man. As soon as you say, oh, I would never believe that. That's too crazy. That's too, that's too outlandish. They got you. They got you. All right, folks, that's it for me. I love each and every one of you. This is our fundraising week. We've got to reach 100% of our goal by Friday. So go ahead and start getting your contributions in now and get those five free downloads for every person that con contributes $100. Hit up the uh, download shop. Get copies of my new five-part presentation as well as all my films, audiobooks, all that stuff in the download shop. If you're a newer listener and you haven't got everything from my download shop yet, that's your mission. We'll see you next time, folks. Take care.